Hey, welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. So this week I'm going to do something a little different. I wanted to share my entire story of my Windows to Linux laptop. Now, if you haven't seen any of my previous videos where I'm going through this whole journey of finding my Linux laptop, uh, you could check that out. I'll leave it in the link area below. But here, I'm going to give you the whole story, where I'm at, and why I think I actually found the quote-unquote perfect Linux laptop for me and it's almost perfect and so before I get into that let me give you some context into my whole journey into doing this so if you watch my channel you know I absolutely love Linux okay and so Linux is my primary operating system this is my monster Linux PC desktop you can probably see it here I also have a video on that as well and what I needed to do was I actually wanted to upgrade my laptop because before all my laptops were older news windows laptops i bought pretty much all of them in like pawn shops okay like this one right here so i got this for like 150 dollars it had windows 8 on it and obviously i put uh linux on it so this has linux mint i think it's like version 17 if i remember correctly or maybe it's 18 anyway it's old uh but it did me really well and this is actually an older HP and I bought this for like $150 and this is really the laptop that got me started into Geek Outdoors and then whenever I got this Monster Linux PC I moved everything over there and it was amazing but then I still needed a laptop okay specifically I needed a Windows laptop and this is where I think for a lot of people who know that I love Linux they also know that I use other operating systems you know I use Mac Windows whatever tool is the best even though I am NOT a fan of the entire Windows experience I had to get it because the rest of the world uses Microsoft Windows or Mac and so most of my work is in digital marketing and also content creation but I kind of figured if I'm gonna be out and about then for digital marketing I don't need a lot of stuff I just basically need a browser and Windows to run certain applications and so because of that I didn't think it was a big deal for me to just get a very low-end laptop this is basically a netbook uh, this is a Dell and it's like less than two hundred dollars but you know not having used Windows for a long time okay um, Windows has not been my primary operating system for years and so I was actually absolutely disappointed and I hated this experience uh, because Windows 10 on this netbook was absolutely horrible even for just web browsing and so because of that I had to get another laptop and after having experienced Windows as my primary operating system I remembered why I didn't like that experience now I do have Windows running in a virtual machine on my monster Linux PC but obviously that's a much more powerful hardware and so what I had to do was I quote unquote upgraded to another Windows laptop so as you can see still here I still have all the stickers on here uh, this is another HP laptop and I just love HP for some reason and this one was actually three hundred dollars so it definitely had more horsepower than this netbook and the great thing was I could do all my work and I could run Windows in a virtual machine and it also had a pretty ample amount of storage it had one a terabyte of storage on here which is great so I could still do my content creation as well as long as it wasn't 4k which led me to the final laptop hopefully that I have because my whole plan was eventually I was gonna get like a gaming laptop not because I'm a gamer because I need the extra horsepower to basically you know have a laptop that could pretty much do what my desktop does and so I didn't plan on upgrading anytime soon but then whenever I was using this new laptop and I realized that I really could not do 4k content creation even though it could do everything else even running Windows in a virtual machine I had to make an upgrade you know and it was an upgrade that I did not want to make because I just barely bought this laptop it's not even like three months old as you can see like I mentioned earlier I still have the stickers on there and so what I did was I bought another Windows 10 laptop and obviously I put Linux on it and it's this one right here another HP laptop and hopefully this is the last one <laughs> that I buy for a while and let me tell you why I bought this okay um, since I do travel I just really feel like I don't want to be limited 
by uh, you know my ability to not only do work uh, digital marketing for my clients and you know for my own self and also obviously my content creation stuff is huge for me and so by not you know being able to do 4k footage I really felt that was limiting okay and so because of that I made this particular upgrade and the thing is I did not upgrade this to Linux right away and uh, as a matter of fact you know I actually was running this for a few weeks until recently as you can see there there's the stickers I, just, I don't know why I gotta point that out <laughs> it's not even been used and so let me tell you my horror story my Windows horror story uh, before I upgraded to Linux so I was planning to upgrade anyway uh, but I've had this for a few weeks now and Windows 10 the entire experience is much better than what I remember uh, in terms of compared to Windows Vista and things of that nature. But, you know, having used Windows in a virtual machine, Windows 10 in a virtual machine, I kind of knew what I was getting into. Uh, and then there was a huge update. You know, Windows has a lot of updates. So there was a huge update that's happened this week. And after the update, my sound card no longer worked. Or the drivers, I even downloaded new drivers and it did not work at all and so I had no sound on my brand new Windows 10 laptop and just to let you know how much I spent on this okay so that one was like less than $200 I think it's like 150 180 somewhere around there this Windows laptop was $300 and I paid $500 for this one and so you can imagine just after a few weeks of having this I had problems due to Windows 10 update and the thing is I'm, a, I'm not a noob I'm a very techie person and I couldn't even figure it out. I looked in forums. I just spent so much time and it reminded me so much of the Windows experience. When things happen, I just have to spend so much time trying to fix it. And the actual huge Windows update that happened took more than an hour and a half. Okay. And I even wiped out the entire operating system and restored it from, you know, the restore feature, recovery feature. And it still, the sound would not work. Okay, and so that pretty much gave me the go ahead. It's time to go ahead and completely wipe this out and put Linux on it. And so that's what I did. And now before I get into that, I want to show you quickly what this is, one is all about. This one actually has an Intel Core i3 dual core uh, processor. It has four threads. It has uh, eight gigs of RAM, which is excellent. And another thing that it has is, which I love, is that it has a lot of ports you know, it's got all the USBs right here. It's got HDMI out. And it has an Ethernet connection. Thank goodness. And then, even on the other side, it has something that I still love, an optical drive. So, I still use those. And it has a, a full SD card slot as well. So, a lot of features on here. And it also has a touch screen, which works in Linux, uh, which is awesome. And the only thing that made it not perfect, okay, and... uh is something that I really wish it did have um, because the storage on this is only 128 gigs okay um, and that's why it's was almost my perfect Linux laptop because with the horsepower that I have on this and all the other features all the hardware features this thing pretty much allows me to do everything that I would do in my desktop including 4k content you know and the build quality everything is just so much nicer uh, than my other laptops and the thing is you know I didn't have to spend over thousand dollars for this quality so I am impressed and at least for me since I'm not a gamer this works extremely well and so this was tough for me because I do want a lot of storage I want at least you know a whole terabyte of hard drive space and you know if I got a gaming laptop I could have got one with a terabyte and an SSD as well but that would have cost me you know like double or triple with this cost and so that was the only drawback that I had and then in some cases not a drawback because it is an SSD and then running on Linux this is extremely fast and if you see here uh, I also have there's Windows 10 running just fine you know it runs really fast on here you know because it's got the 8 gigs of RAM and at the same time you know it's got the Core i3 processor so it does everything that I need um, and so if it had like a terabyte of storage it would have been perfect for me and so that's my overall Windows back to Windows back to Linux uh, purchasing more hardware than I needed journey and you know looking back I definitely could have saved a lot more money if I would have just bought a powerful laptop at the beginning but on the flip side 
um, I was able to learn a lot of things about the entire Windows only uh, experience that I haven't had for a long time and at the same time since I actually took the time and spent all this money to go through all of this experiences and in some cases people say all this pain then you don't have to go through the same thing and so I pretty much covered every type of laptop except for maybe gaming laptop that you would have to purchase and at the same time these are brand new Windows laptops and so um, you know I've just shown you that you can put Linux on these which I've done they have wiped out Windows and they have the you know Windows 10 running in a virtual machine and so I would say if you were just gonna be using it for everyday tasks like browsing or whatnot you know and even some light content editing as long as it's 1080p I think this is a good choice about three hundred dollars it's not gonna give you the best experience but it's pretty much gonna allow you to do almost everything uh, except for 4k content and also gaming and then for this one right here uh, at least for me this this is almost perfect for me except for the storage and since I am not a gamer I, I don't really lose any of that about the only games I play is you know like old retro emulator games and I have no problems running that here and so that is it for this episode of my perfect almost perfect Linux laptop and really my entire journey uh, to get to this point now the only other thing left is for me to actually get a full-on gaming laptop uh, that would have the most horsepower but honestly at this point with this new laptop I don't really think I need that you know I think whenever that requires it gaming or maybe I'm gonna do a lot more complex 4k content or beyond then it'll probably make sense for me to upgrade at that point but I don't intend to do that anytime soon <laughs> these laptops are so new I might as well save my money now and just enjoy the experience that I have here. And so that is it for this long journey of an episode. If you had any thoughts on this, be sure to leave it in the comments area below. And if you wanted to see any of my older videos where I got these and even my Linux PC build, you can check that out in the description area below as well. But thanks so much for watching. So if you did enjoy these videos, be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey geeks, if you are a creative geek like me and you wanted to learn how to create content on YouTube and other places on the internet, then check out my Go Content Creators Group where you'll get access to 30 videos plus additional content for all the creative geeks out there. And the best part of it is, all of this is free. Simply head over to the link below, check out my page, and sign up for my Go Content Creators Group. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the other side. Thanks for checking out this episode. And as always, if you like these videos, be sure to click on the subscribe button. And for full written content, audio content, and additional geek stuff, head over to geekoutdoors.com. And I'll see you outdoors on the very next episode.